Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I made Ferrum the Ironwood Phoenix, and this little one will be available for adoption in my shop on my website, creaturesofnat.com. So stay tuned. Right, so I'm starting out with that resin cast that I usually start my art dolls out with, and this time I have cast some glass eyes in the head. And I'm currently working on a tutorial on how to do this, so it will be a paid tutorial um, which will be available as a PDF format and I'm hoping to have a video tutorial along with it and it will be available in my shop. So I just need to work on the um, filming and photos, so I've got it all written down. Alright, so I'm starting off painting the whole uh, skin area of the Phoenix in a grey colour and I'm using a neutral grey by the brand Chromacryl and it's just a water-based acrylic paint. And as usual, I always prime my resin pieces with a primer, so I use a primer called Dervian um, Matisse and it's just a like a background primer. And I also want to make a video on different primers as well, so there's really two that I use, so I can um, yeah, let you guys know which one's what and what does what. So I wanted to do a black beak for this um, Phoenix, and I'm just using the same chrome acryl uh, paints in a black colour. So generally with all the dolls that I create, I have a little backstory. So here is Ferrum's backstory. Ironwood Phoenixes are very much like vultures, however they're extremely rare. Their body is berry in colour and their wings uh, and display feathers are a striking red colour. Their prey consists of small rodents, reptiles and insects. They are very intelligent and are one of the very few tool using creatures. They use these tools to fish insects out of holes and to coax ants and termites out of their mounds. Each tool use is taught to the next generation from their parents. They are primarily found in the Ironwoods area of Mur, the Red Tribal Lands in Cry, India. So that's a little story of the Ironwoods Phoenixes. So now I'm just putting some, um, just some black colouring around the eye area. I think it brings out the colour of the um, eyes itself. Um, I've pretty much done this with most of my Phoenixes or Griffins that I've made. Um, yeah, just really like the look of it. And then also just filling in some areas where I want some more details to be. And pretty much the same deal with the claws. So this is another resin piece that I've um, sculpted and cast uh, in resin. And I'm just going in and filling the skin area in that gray uh, chroma acryl paint. And I like to blob on the um, base color of the paint that I'm using just so I have it and I can spread it around. And any residue that I have, I can put it onto the next piece. You just gotta be careful that you're not filling in any of the details with too much paint, otherwise you'll lose the details. And I probably did about three coats of this grey paint because it doesn't have um, the greatest coverage, it's not bad, um, but yeah, just more coverage and so you can't see that um, the white underneath. On to the nails, once that grey is dry, I then do the first coat of black on the nails. I chose black this time just because it matches the beak, but if I did like a grey beak, I usually do grey nails or something or a yellow beak, I do yellow nails. So usually with the black, I do about two coats because it covers pretty well. Um, and then I'll just put a uh, nice um, varnish on it so it is a bit more durable. And again, I have um, put a primer on these resin pieces just so that paint can stick to something and it has a tooth where the paint can get in. All right, so once that is dry, I'm then gonna go over with a black wash, and this is just paint that is being thinned down with water, and it makes it a bit runnier, so it can um, fall into the cracks and all the details that I've sculpted onto the foot. So the wash is a really great way to bring out some details and add some extra depth and add some extra effect to any of your sculptures. So if you're interested in a video about dry brushing and um, washes uh, let me know in the comments and I can uh, just make a little tip video about that because uh, you can achieve a lot of effects with different um, washes and dry brushes it's a really great way to um, paint all of your resin pieces or sculptures so once I've done that I'm gonna leave these pieces to dry and move on to the faux fur so I'm using this nice berry colored fur it's a really high quality faux fur and it is a woven fur so it is quite hard to work with it's very moody and difficult <laughs> so luckily for the phoenix it's only a two-part pattern that I've created uh, so I'm gonna go and cut out these patterns using a small pair of sharp scissors 
and that way you can get in between the pile of the fur and um, you can cut out any details, any small details, uh, you won't have a problem with cutting the pile. So I have a video about different faux furs and as you can see this one is woven and um, when you stretch it you can see how the faux fur pulls apart so that you have to be careful of around the edges uh, as it does fray quite a lot. And another thing with woven faux fur is no matter how well you cut it or what you cut it with it loses a hell of a lot of pile around those edges so just something to note if you are using this fur for the first time. So this is the pile that I'm left with uh, by pulling out all around the edges of those two pieces. So quite a lot of fur there, but again, uh, you know, it can make the fur, the fur a bit easier to sew because it's not so thick. But yeah, don't be alarmed if you get this much fallout from a woven back faux fur. Right, so I'm going to pin these pieces together and sew it up in a sewing machine and this little pattern is a bit different from the rest of my patterns so I have to leave the neck area open but because it's quite small uh, so it's easier to poke it through to the right way around and I also leave the back end open and the legs aren't sewn as well. So all of that will be hand sewn when I put the doll together. So the good thing that I like working with um, these bird dolls is there's only two bits of fabric to sew together. So it's really, really quick to sew, especially on a sewing machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it the right way around. And here we have the piece ready to be sewn up and put the armature inside. So I'm using a wire armature for this particular piece. Um, I am working on an armature tutorial, so that will be another pay tutorial. So I have five coming and I plan on having like a pack. So it's a little bit cheaper to buy the pack instead of individual ones. So I think there's about five or six. I can't really remember. I think there's five. So once I have inserted the armature, I then attach the resin pieces to the armature. That's also another tutorial that's coming. Uh, and then I sew it up using a ladder stitch and I just released a ladder stitch video so you can check that out on how I do it. And it just basically involves going back and forth between um, the two fabric pieces and just making sure that your tension is tight enough but not too tight as well. And when it's all sewn up I then attach it to the resin piece using a tacky fabric glue which you can find in pretty much all craft stores that you have around you. So I added the faux fur to the face and also added some feathers. Uh, I am thinking of doing a wing tutorial but I want to refine it a bit more before I do that. But anyway, this is Ferrum. And that's it for me today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any re video requests, you can leave it in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!